So it was about a year ago when we last covered RPCS3 on the channel. And if you're not familiar with what RPCS3 is, well, it's a PlayStation 3 emulator for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Now, emulating the PlayStation 3 is a monumental challenge and one that's not yet been done officially by Sony on their PlayStation 5 hardware. Of course, there's always countless rumors and false insider info that PS3 backward compatibility is coming, but the reality is it's complex, very complex. And while I absolutely believe Sony does have the technical insight and knowledge to make it happen in an official capacity, unfortunately, the cost of doing such a thing is very expensive. And it doesn't appear as though Sony is really interested in going down this road. They'd rather much focus on the PlayStation 5 and bringing new experiences to their customers. And I certainly don't blame them. I've covered the complexities of PlayStation 3 emulation on the channel before, and I've even spoken to ex-Sony hardware developers very familiar with the PlayStation 3. And they've also confirmed the complexities of the PS3 hardware and trying to emulate it. And this is what makes RPCS3 even all more impressive. The emulator really shouldn't exist, and yet it's been out for a while and continues to show improvement. Let's find out what's been improved. Today's video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. With internet privacy being such a huge deal these days, it's more important now than ever to protect yourself. With Surfshark VPN, you can easily hide your IP address and encrypt all data that you send and receive. You can easily switch regions to other countries in the world. This means not only your true IP address and identity is masked, it also means you can get around any annoying geolocation locked video content. You know the ones that say, this video isn't supported in your country? This can get annoying for me when I want to watch local Aussie news. With Surfshark VPN, I can switch my country to Australia and this problem simply goes away. When I'm researching my videos, because of the nature of my channel, sometimes I need to access older unsecured websites of modding and the underground, and I feel safe in knowing that my true IP address is not exposed to these sites. Surfshark VPN also allows you to connect to unlimited devices simultaneously on a single account. And this includes Windows devices, Linux, Android, iOS, Amazon Fire TV, and much more. To get an exclusive Surfshark deal, enter promo code MVG for an extra three months free at surfshark.deals slash MVG. And if you think it sucks, there's a 30 day money back guarantee, which will give you plenty of time to try out Surfshark VPN risk free. So let's revisit general compatibility. Last year, when we covered RPCS3, the compatibility percentage of playable games, which is defined as games that can be completed with playable performance and no game breaking glitches, hit 63.66%. Now going back to check today, we see that the percentage has increased to nearly 68%. Now that slight increase may not seem like a lot, but when we're talking over 3,500 games, that is overall a fairly considerable increase. Not only this, RPCS3 also added save state ability to the emulator, which is a really cool touch. In some ways, it's an interesting comparison to something like Quick Resume on the Xbox Series line of console. And of course, you have so much more configuration and control over these save states as you do on Quick Resume, for example. But the concept of having a save state for a PlayStation 3 emulated title is absolutely mind blowing. Now, I think when we talk about RPCS3, many of us are thinking about MGS4, Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots, because it's one of those games that's probably going to be locked on the PlayStation 3 forever. So the only real way to play Guns of the Patriots without original hardware is to use RPCS3. So there are a lot of eyes on Metal Gear Solid performance. And the good news is, thanks to some improvements to the RSX and SPU, these optimizations that were done back in May of last year, we started to see some pretty significant performance improvements with games such as Metal Gear Solid 4. Now, in my experience, if you take a look at my footage here, this is captured directly off my PC. We're running at 60 frames per second with a 4K internal resolution upscale. Now, I will say that the game is certainly not locked at 60 frames per second, and one of the main areas where MGS4 does basically have its issues is that it's quite unstable. It has a tendency to just kind of crash anytime it feels like. Now, there are some patches, of course, that you can apply to smooth out and stabilize the gameplay. 
but it doesn't take away how great the performance of this game is becoming. It's obviously something that will vary depending on the machine that you have. And look, if you have something like a Steam Deck, you're not going to get anywhere near this level of performance. In fact, running MGS4 on a Steam Deck is, is quite tedious for different reasons. However, I do want to call this out and really just give a huge thanks to the RPCS3 team for providing some significant performance improvements in this fashion. Now, for those people that are interested in my specs of my PC, I will leave those in the description below. I do have a fairly high-end gaming rig, and, you know, this is something that obviously a lot of you may not have the same level of performance, but I do think with some tweaking and some adjustments to your internal resolution upscaling and things like that, you can still get a pretty good experience overall. Now, one really great area of RPCS3 that I think has a lot of eyes on it right now is the ability to unlock frame rates to 60 frames and even, even push it even higher than that, depending on the game itself. Now, this is really cool because this opens up these games to be played in such a way that they were really never meant for, but they're so much more responsive and so much faster and more fluid to play that you can't help but just want to jump on a 60 FPS patch for pretty much everything. And the games that really kind of struck me as impressive was GTA 5, a game that didn't have any business running at 60 frames per second on PS3 hardware, yet here it is running under RPCS3. I also tested out Moto Storm, which is a game that obviously ran at 30 frames per second on PS3 hardware, and with the unlocked FPS patch, you can push those frame rates quite high and you can see the gameplay here is almost transformative as compared to the original. And of course, Demon Souls is one game that isn't really that taxing when we talk about the hardware that you need to play Demon Souls. And here it is with the 60 FPS patch, silky smooth. And again, thanks to some improvements that the RPCS3 team has done since the last time I talked about this emulator a year ago, there's also additional graphical enhancements to this game. Now, Infamous 2 was another game that I unlocked the frame rate for, and as you can see here, it runs very, very well as well. So look, overall, unlocking the frame rate on these PS3 games is definitely something that you wanna to do to really just open up the gameplay and make it a transformative experience. Now, last but certainly not least, I do want to talk about Gran Turismo 5 and Gran Turismo 6. These particular games have had some updates. And now, for the very first time with RPCS3, we're getting some playable gameplay with Gran Turismo 5 and 6. Now, as you can see, this again is my test footage that I've captured on my PC. And GT6 runs quite well. Now, overall, it still has some graphical issues and it still definitely needs some work, but this is really the first time the emulator has been able to run these games in a fairly stable fashion. And this is a very exciting thing. Now, you may be wondering, well, what is the big deal about old Gran Turismo games? Well, it's quite simple. First of all, GT5 and GT6 are considered some of the very best in the Gran Turismo series, and they are beloved. But also, keep in mind that Gran Turismo Sport and Gran Turismo 7 suffer from online only DRM issues and it has turned some people away from the Gran Turismo series. So being able to go back and run classic Gran Turismo 5 or 6 and have access to the online multiplayer functionality that RPCS3 also provides means that you can play these games DRM free forever and that is an amazing thing. Now overall I did test out GT6 and I played a couple of hours worth and I did some testing. And overall, I'm very happy with the progress that's been made. It's certainly not perfect. There are still some desync issues. And again, there are definitely some texture issues, but performance is good and it's very, very stable. And this is an exciting update. Now, finally, before I uploaded this video, there was a tweet from RPCS3 that the 0.0.28 version has been tagged. And this version incorporates all the changes and all the updates that I talked about in this episode and probably a bunch more that I'm still not really up to date on. But this is very exciting news that the team is continuing to iterate and improve this emulator every single day. Now, of course, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be unhappy that their favorite AAA game isn't working properly on RPCS3. For those people, I just wanna say 
just be patient. This is probably the most complicated emulator that will ever be developed. And I'm dead serious when I say that. When we look at PlayStation 4 emulation, you've seen already we've seen some strides that have been made with a translation layer type approach that's being used. So emulating a PS3, as mentioned, is very, very complicated. And the best thing that I can recommend to people that are interested in the advancements in PlayStation 3 emulation via RPCS3 is to donate to their Patreon, get on board, help them out with whatever they need. This is, like I said, the most important emulator that's probably been ever developed, and it really does need your support. I'm very, very excited about the future of RPCS3. And as always on the channel, we are going to continue to monitor its progress and provide updates where I believe we need to talk about. So once again, big thanks to the RPCS3 team for continuing to update and these improvements look absolutely phenomenal. I can't wait to see what happens next year. A year from now, we'll probably make a follow-up episode as well and talk about the improvements that were made over the next 12 months or so. But guys, I'm going to leave it here for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye for now.